Well, the age of five is it's my epic series. <laughs> I think the the earlier one now is now becoming epic because of the number of books, but not because of the world setting. In the age of the five, it's uh, it's continents, the conflict between continents rather than countries. Um, the the characters are everything from you know animals. There's little animal characters who can use magic right through to gods. So there's a huge scope in you, know, you have immortal sorcerers and things like that. So it's kind of the grand one. Um, and uh, the black magicians. Well, your your Kyralia series started with the Black Magicians trilogy. You dreamt the beginning of the Black Magicians trilogy. Yes, um, and I've always said that dreams are not usually a really good source for um, story ideas. <laughs> and I can remember when I was reading, for a while there I read Slush for Morales, and I remember every now and then there would be a story where clearly somebody had woken up and gone, oh, that's an amazing dream, man, I'm just going to write that down. And I remember this, this famous one that I thought, the very first story they gave me, and had these tricolored people, and I wondered if it was this way or that way. <laughs> That they were tricolored, you know, and uh, it was very clearly somebody had had a fantastic dream and just wrote it down, but it had no plot. Um, but I, you know, sometimes you get a pretty good idea from dreams. <laughs> and I remember after this particular dream I had, where I had, I know, it was sort of the influence of it was that I'd been watching the the news late at night, and they were reporting on the uh, Barcelona Olympics preparations. And Barcelona Olympics is 1992, so. It boggles my mind that this is when the first idea started. That long ago, that's 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and they were, they, the news report was about how allegedly they were going around in buses and loading all the, the, the street people, you know, homeless people and anyone who didn't look tidy out of Barcelona. They were shipping them out to other cities. <clears throat> and... Uh, and I had this fantastic dream where I was in a crowd of people being driven out of a city by someone, and then the someones became magicians, and then we all started throwing stones, and then we you know, threw a stone and it hit the magician, and then I woke up and went, that's actually a pretty good bloody first story. So I wrote it down, I thought it wouldn't come to anything. And when I did write the the first chapter, which is the very first chapter of, um, of the Magician's Guild, um, I know I did make little adjustments to make it work in the context of the world, but it's pretty much that, that mm -hmm. feeling. It's a bit scary that um, they, they actually did that in, in Barcelona, but it works really well in the book. <laughs> yes. Now, apparently they have done it in other cities, but it's always allegedly. Yes, yes. And the end of the Black Magi Magicians trilogy was actually a reaction against another story that you'd read. Um, not so much a specific story, a specific book, um, but I did find that at the time, a lot of the fantasy I was reading had endings that just tied everything up too neatly. Mm -hmm. um, there'd be a parade, there'd be six marriages, you know, there'd be ticker tape everywhere and everything was so neatly tied off. And you know, there, there just didn't seem to be a cost to all this. And I thought there needed to be a, a sense of a, a bittersweet ending. There needed to be um, a price that was paid to gain peace again. So I won't go into it because it'll spoil the plot. <laughs> yes. Um, a Little Britain on Twitter uh, asks, did you purposefully write a feminist struggle and triumph in the Black Magicians trilogy? Yes and no. Um, I think naturally because I'm female, I was going to write a female character, mainly to the point of view of a female character at that time because they say the first book you write is semi-autobiographical. Um, but at the same time, I know I'd, I'd read Firestone, read Eddings and, and this whole new sort of, like, even Robin Hobbs' first book had a male young character. And I thought, why can't, you know, why, why can't the female character be the one who's main, the main character? And I don't want her to succeed because she's wielded a sword or she's the princess or she's the chosen one in any way, sort of destiny. I never, I never liked the idea of prophecies and destiny because you can tell how the story's going then. You know? It reduces the, the mystery for me. Um, so I wanted a, a character who, who succeeded because of determination and integrity and all those you know, character strengths more so than 
I mean, she is a very strong magician, but she's amongst very strong magicians, so that kind of cancels things out. Mm. Yes. Can you give us a potted history of Kyralia? Oh, potted history. Where would I start? <laughs> Probably not, actually. Well, in terms of your trilogy or and, and your standalone. Oh, how the books fit together? Mm. Okay, well, there's the first series, um, which is try not to spoil the plot. Obviously, it's the first series. Um, and, and I introduce it, um, several characters who were quite young at that stage, um, ranging between about 15 and... Yes, some of the older characters are mid-30s, 50, etc. And then I remember when I finished the series, I thought... I, I had been working on that series for over seven years and I was a little bit tired <laughs> of the world and the characters. And I thought... I'm not going to write anymore in this world. Um, but, of course, I've learnt now to never say never. Uh, because I did have an idea for a, a book based on a, an event that happened in the past, uh, the Sachakan War, and that became The Magician's Apprentice. Um, and the other, other reason I wanted to write The Magician's Apprentice was to show a similar character, which is Tessia, than, to Sonia, but how different the culture and the, uh, the technological development and the societal situation was how different that would make the paths be um whereas sonia was poor tessia is a middle class doctor's daughter you know it, it made quite a difference um and then i also had a couple of ideas and the thing is that when you when you finish a big story like that i do like to leave a couple of little loose ends in there just to keep people thinking you know she didn't answer that question i wonder what could you know and that gets the reader sort of in some ways, interacting with the story as they try to imagine what would happen to these you know, other loose ends or who had the third blood ring and things like that. And uh, so I took those strands and I looked at which ones I could actually weave into a, a future um, story. And also, I think a really good fantasy story not only changes the characters by the end, but the world fundamentally changes in some way. Um, and I, I'd set everything up so all the different parts of the Kyralian story in that first series changed. So there was the, the political situation, but there was also the underworld situation that had changed. There was the situation with magic. They now knew that there was more to magic than there had been before. Um, and then, of course, there's all the couples and that sort of thing that you can and uh, you know play upon. And so I, I had all, I had set it up really well. Like subconsciously, I knew I was going to write another story. <laughs> So it made them 20 years older. And the fun part of that, that was it made Sonia my age. So it could both be cranky middle-aged women. <laughs> Although when I um, talked to you last year, you did say, but you're not, a you're not an overprotective mother. No, well, I'm not a mother, so I can't be an overprotective mother. <laughs> Count the cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, cats can be our children. <laughs> yes, and he's going through a particularly raucous teenage stage at the moment. <laughs> He even has acne. Oh, really? Yes. Oh dear. Um, you've set, you've written a second tr trilogy set in Kyralia, which is which is currently ca in the process of coming. I am in the process of reading ah. the. Can you see it? The Traitor Queen. Yes. I'm halfway through. It's been a very busy week. I have my yes. Wow. Yay. What's the launch date? Um, it varies. It's just launched in the UK. Um, I think the official date was two, the 2nd. Uh, in Australia, it's the 14th. I'm not completely sure what it is in the US. It could be the 2nd or it could be the 14th. Uh, in Poland, it's the 8th. And in Germany, it's in November. So Germany in the past has lined it up exactly, but I, I'm not sure why it's going to be later this time. Mm. So, And there's going to be other languages as well, but I'm not sure what they are. They, hard to keep track. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about what's happening in Traitor Queen? 